Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Um, first, I just want to welcome all the new subscribers and viewers. Um, hopefully, you'll find something here on this channel that is of interest or um, educational, maybe, or entertaining based on my eccentricities. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heartfelt welcome and um, I'm glad that you've joined me. And before I show you the idol, oh, what, what am I showing you today? We're gonna look at the orc idol that I have been working on. Uh, but um, before um, some of the orc collectors, they're a very passionate group. I, I think orc players, collectors, they are more passionate than most armies out there. So uh, just before you have any suggestions or critiques, um, about the idol. Just give me a chance to explain all of my thinking before you leave a comment um, and hopefully I will at least explain the thing that you are thinking about and why I made the decisions that I did. So, Also, I just wanted to say this is my first sculpt I've ever done. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't think I've ever really done any real sculpting. Maybe a little way back but it's uh, not really been there. So um, I'm pretty proud about the way it came out, but I just wanted to put that out there as well. Uh, learned a lot and um, always, always room to grow. Uh, and just before I get uh, over to the bench, I just wanna say, got some notable mentions at the end, as well as a little inside look uh, behind the scenes of Terranscape. So hopefully you'll stick around to the end of the video, which is probably gonna be the end of part two, because there's a lot to talk about, but hopefully I'll see you on the flip side. Before that, we should probably actually go to the bench and take a look at what I've been up to. So, 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 here is the idol. And uh, there's lots to talk about. I'm gonna try to point things out, but um, you know, if, uh, I, if you get bored looking just at the image, um, forgive me. Um, I am not gonna pick it up and turn it around because setting up these cameras for this shot took a long time uh, to get it close but to have a reasonable depth of field so most of it looks in focus this camera here actually is on autofocus because its depth is so shallow um, i need to let it come in uh, to the arm and whatnot in the back when i move it around so i'm not touching it <laughs> plus all of these bits on here are just barely tacked on i'll talk about that at the end though so all right so where did i start so first i started with the uh, proportions of the the model uh, because I didn't really understand what the proportions were compared to normal anatomy. So I actually went online and I did a little anatomy research and I'll show you a photo here. And basically the normal human anatomy has um, the head as the reference and then we have eighths going down to the bottom of the foot and that helps determine where the waist is and the groin and where the nipples are and the uh, the shin and the ankles and all of that. So using that as a foundation I then went back and change those to create a monstrous appearance. And that is really the essence of, of what makes things look monstrous in, you know, whether it's a face or, or anywhere else, because when the proportions are out of what your eye is expecting, it looks wrong and monsters look wrong. Uh, they're supposed to, right? So this head has been brought, oh, I can't believe I touched it and fall off. Um, the head's been brought, you know, down. There is no neck. Uh, the uh, shins are almost non-existent. Uh, the wrist is almost non-existent. And even with those intentional changes, I sort of felt like I ended up with something that looked, I don't know, fairly proportional in some ways. Um, it, I, it was a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, to get the pose, I wanted to deviate from the, the raised arm, you know, striking down. And so what I did instead is I remember fondly a spell in Warhammer before GW um, took a dump all over fantasy. And they had a, a spell, and it was called the Foot of Gork. And it was this template that you would cast, and a big, a big foot would stomp down on the unit and then you know uh, you would take your casualties so I thought instead of having the arm up or carrying a weapon or anything like that I would lift the foot up and make it at a height right so that you could stomp somebody and uh, maybe the uh, the idol is part of you know the 
praying for future stomps and future battles. I don't know. But that was what I wanted. It felt different. And I really uh, liked it right from the get-go. Um, just for scale comparisons here, Mr. Tippy is uh, one inch tall, ballpark, right? He's 30 millimeters, a um, little over actually, and over an inch, I mean. And so the model is about four inches tall in height. I shrunk it down from my previous discussion. Um, a, a viewer made a very good point about it not dominating the, uh, the entire board visually. And I'm going to um, play with putting it up on a platform. And so I have the options of raising that up. I don't think I'm going to raise it up too much, but maybe an inch off the ground, maybe two. And uh, I haven't made a firm decision on that, but that would lift it up, give it a little bit more uh, wide view of, you know, from the, the army, if you will, but still remain a little bit of a smaller visual impact on the board. So um, that was my sizing decisions. I used Super Sculpey to um, sculpt the main body. Uh, and I chose Super Sculpey because of its open-ended working time. It doesn't set up until you bake it. And there were many instances, I basically, let's come around to the back here. I basically worked from the top down because I could then hold the model at the bottom while I sculpted. And um, it's pinned, you know, into the board, but it's, uh, it's a, uh, aluminum foil armature which has a lot of flex and I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on it um, because of course you know this is if you know levers right the fulcrum is far away from the top compared to the bottom anyway um, so I used Super Sculpey and that created a restriction however um, in order to bake the Super Sculpey I had to um, omit embedding all of these bits into the model itself and that's a typical characteristic of uh, orc uh, construction as it's depicted and so that's the reason why the bits are not as a part organically of the body itself and um, I'm going to talk more about the bits a little bit later on but that was the main impediment to that and I checked about maybe casting them in uh, milliput and then I could have used those this was after the fact actually but milliput's right on the edge it's about uh, 260 it can take um, roughly and um, the Sculpey goes to 275 so I don't know I'm, I didn't uh, do any testing um, maybe it have been an option but maybe not I went for a wooden plank um, like see in the back here um, I basically uh, made sort of like a floor section uh, that I pla placked on there placked on there plopped on there I don't know nothing got plopped on let me tell you that um, and then it's um you know log construction uh, with branches and, and limbs and I did try to do some thin um, you know like vine work like there's a little there's a little bit coming over here I shouldn't call it vines my intention was thin branches that were being used to kind of weave some of the bits together um, let's see if that's on the small cam. It's not. So, um, you know, there's a little one here and here. Those ended up looking maybe, oh, here's a good one, uh, kind of right in there. Uh, those ended up looking a little viney, and that's not a problem, but it wasn't what I expected or was hoping for, aiming for. And those are way more difficult to sculpt than the big pieces um, because they're so small, any little glitch in them, and uh, it really shows as wrong. So, uh, hmm. Those were, those were a challenge. We'll just call them that and, and move on. I tried my best to match GW textures. I didn't hit it really straight on, but I think I got pretty close. The, the sculpting work in the... Uh, let me see if I can get a good, a good piece here for the, the close cam. Um, wait a minute. Let's take this arm. Uh, hmm. Mm, all right, we'll take his thigh here. It's not the best angle, but it's all right. Um, so a lot of the GW bark is is more impressions. And that from one of the pieces that I was looking at, um, the uh, Giant Club and some others, it can vary in how densely it is uh, striated. You know, it's really just pressed in there. Uh, so I had a little liberty there, and I think I did a pretty good uh, job with that overall. Um, let me see here. What's... Uh... It's a little weird trying to look through two cameras at once. Yeah. So, um, you know, I got, a, I think, a fairly decent uh, effect on that. And um, one of the things as I was working, I was like, oh, God, I got to go back in. And this is the Sculpey benefit of putting in a couple knots and, you know, putting in a couple 
limbed branches off of the pieces and um, shaving some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, what are they, limbs, um, tree sections, you know, pointed, um, you know, to shave them up to a point. Uh, and so this is all trying to kind of capture some of that motif. The planking is a little bit more tricky, and uh, that was pretty difficult to put grain into it uh, and have it look right. But it's, I mean, I think it looks fine, but I don't know if it matches GW planking exactly. There's actually a wide variety in the Goblin uh, town box, the planks can vary widely in the types of textures that they have. They needed to do that, otherwise it would look really uniform. So, you know, again, there's some room there. There's some room, um, but um, it was, I, once I picked up on one style for the plank, I was like, I'm going with it. I'm not going to, not going to try to add variety in, in that style all over the piece. So after um, I kind of got all of that done, uh, the main I got really down to about the waist and I realized before I continue, I had to figure out the mask and figure out how it's going to sit on the body, uh, partly because of the pose, right? This arm is a problem, that, that thigh is a problem. So how in the world am I going to get the mask uh, to fit? So I ended up building um, the mask and actually it started out quite a bit wider. It was out to about here and it came down quite a bit further and it was uh, too large for the model, not only to fit in the, the sort of palette, um, not palette, what do you, the canvas that I have here, but it also looked disproportionate. So I ended up trimming it way back, way back, trim it back, trim it back, kept doing that, trim, trim, trim. And um, then um, I had trouble um, gluing all of these little, these little boards together. I thought I would use um, uh, um, like Plastruck uh, plasto weld or or another kind of uh, solvent. I have one from testers I really like. So it actually melts the plastic and then it bonds and I thought that would be the strongest bond possible. Mm, not really. I had a lot of trouble. It takes a long time to set and it's good but it's not the best alone for me tweaking this and trying to, you know, uh, uh, how am I going to fit this? And all. so I ended up actually using super glue as well as that to uh, bond the pieces. And that actually worked out pretty well. And then I went in to do the roping. So this is my first roping here on the mask. And what I did is I went in and used um, wire. As you can see, this is um, copper. I made some uh, very fine braided wire, uh, twisted up some wire. I have wire in quite a few gauges, uh, so for a variety of reasons. And so that gave me some nice uh, possibilities for variation. This is a ribbon wire here, and that worked out really well. Um, because, I don't know if that's going to show, I hope not too much anyway. Um, Mm. Anyway, in the back here, you can see um, some of the wire up here. Um, I was able to pull it all the way through and then tighten it to the tension that I wanted, basically just before it breaks. And that is giving that nice, tight, taut look across those spots, which is important because the rope is supposed to be taut as it holds them together. So after that bit of success, I was thinking, okay, great, I'm going to use the wire on the body. Not so easy. Um, when I try to do a piece like, like this, for instance, where I'm coming across like this, drilling um, pinholes for it and getting the wire to fit into one side and then pull it nice and tight across and pin it in the other one uh, was almost impossible. And can you do it? Yeah. But can you get the tension to look right? This one's actually a little bit of a goof. It uh, broke and I had to reattach it and it's just a little, it's riding just a little high, but it, it's okay. But, <laughs> you know me. But for instance, these um, straps right here, you know, these are, you know, they had to really look tight. You don't want sag or dips or, right, in, in here especially. So that was not really possible with the wire. So I had to go in and sculpt all of the ropes. I used Procreate for the ropes. Uh, because um, I just bought some and uh, I liked it sort of, um, it's a little bit more firm than the Milliput. Um, it's got um, a pretty, it's got a, I think a longer, oh yeah, no, no, it's got a longer working time, which I appreciated as well. And can I just say that uh, rolling out these tiny even rolls was a challenge. 
um, that that was hard. In fact, I'll, hold on just a second because I'm sure somebody will want to know how did I do it or they're going to make a suggestion on how I did it. This is not in focus, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm telling myself more than you. Um, so the Tentacle Maker, if you haven't seen it, you can look for it online, is a rolling system to uh, produce, um, whoa, mm, nice, to produce, uh, you know, thin rolls that then have a texture and the Tentacle Maker kit has these different kinds of patterns that you can roll it onto. However, the most important aspect of it that I was interested in is by taking two flat surfaces and rolling, you can more effectively get an even roll and keep it a little more uniform. That was kind of a challenge actually, even with using these as a, uh, as a foundation for it. They are pretty flat. I, I think they're a little concave on the inside, um, but pretty much they were pretty flat. And so that was the, the process I used um, to get the rolls and it's work <laughs> because let's see oh they just show in this camera then what I did is I took a, a few of those I rolled them out twice as thin which would be half as thick and then um, twisted them to make a braided rope um, obviously you can see I didn't do many of those Luckily, GW has a lot of very plain single strand ropes in a lot of their models, so that gave me a little freedom there. Um, but they look great, I think, but they're a bear to make because not only do you have to roll, you know, the roll evenly, then you have to take the two and twist them evenly. And when it starts to get uneven, right, you got to go in and, and tweak it and just try to get it perfectly uniform and hopefully also match between other pieces that are on the model. It's, uh, that's some work. I won't uh, kid you for the few spots that show, and look at me, I've already covered up some of them. Um, it, it's not, uh, not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but did those. And um, just before I go on, um, uh, before I go on to another aspect, I forgot to mention two things. Um, one, there, and you've probably been looking at this and wondering, there is an LED in the head um, that my goal is to have that, you know, red light shine uh, through the eyes. Took a while actually to get that position, to hide the LED, get the mask to seal it all in. <laughs> and then I was sad afterwards because I realized I didn't check the, the output of the LED in terms of its brightness. And I probably could have selected one that's brighter than the one that's in here. Um, I, it may not be a problem. They may shine just fine. I tested it. Then I put it in the oven, tested that. Then I installed it, tested it, you know. Uh, no, I don't think I've tested it again. I think I was afraid to. If it doesn't work, it's fine. I'm going to move on, cut the wires, and call it. Um, but I'll see. But I wish I had done a little more research on the LEDs for the eyes uh, because it was something I really wanted to do. And if it doesn't work, I won't cry, but it would have been nice. Um, hmm. We'll see as time goes on. I, I haven't uh, powered them up since I installed it. But I do know the oven won't break them, so it's all good. 